Somalia's coast is a haven for desperate pirates, ruthless men ready to hijack ships for massive ransoms. But what happens when these seafaring marauders, armed with rusty AK-47s and rickety boats, set their sights on a U.S. Navy submarine? Does this become a showdown worthy of a Hollywood blockbuster? Or something else entirely? Before we move on to the confrontation between Somali pirates and submarines, we must firstly briefly look at where the pirates come from. After the fall of Somalia in 1991, and with no protection along the coast, foreign fishing vessels stripped the waters bare, causing coastal communities to starve. Fishermen, once the cornerstone of the local economy, chose a sinister path. The defense of their waters transformed into dangerous assaults. Simple boats evolved into fast ships equipped with GPS and guns, and ransoms soared from thousands to millions. These pirates were not romantic heroes, but sea business tycoons backed by warlords and criminal networks. They dominated the Gulf of Aden and the Indian Ocean, where no ship, from tanker to yacht, was safe. The world watched as these makeshift crews outsmarted warships, Yet, it was the longing of the Somali communities for peace, not the sea battles that turned the tide against piracy. As Somalia strove for calm, the life of a pirate became more dangerous than that of a fisherman, and with tighter patrols, the Somalis ultimately broke the power of the pirates. However, pirates remain a threat. There are still pirate ships on the sea, sometimes even daring to challenge submarines. Why would a pirate ship even attack a submarine, and would it attack a military one? Somali pirates operating off the Horn of Africa became notorious in the early 21st century for their audacious attacks on commercial shipping vessels. These attacks were driven by poverty, lawlessness, and the opportunity to extract hefty ransoms. However, attacking a naval submarine would be an act of incredible foolhardiness. Naval submarines are among the most technologically advanced and heavily armed vessels in existence. They are designed with stealth and lethality in mind. Their sonar systems give them unmatched underwater awareness, while their torpedoes or cruise missiles can easily destroy any surface vessel. Somali pirates operate in small, nimble skiffs with limited weaponry, usually rifles and the occasional rocket-propelled grenade. They stand absolutely no chance against any submarine. Any attempt to attack a submerged submarine would likely end with the pirates losing their lives before they even knew what hit them. Submarines, unlike commercial ships, don't carry valuable cargo, at least not in the traditional sense. While disrupting global trade was the primary goal of Somali pirates, capturing a naval submarine and its crew would offer little in terms of ransom or bargaining power. The political and military repercussions of such an act would be immense while a nation whose submarine was attacked would likely be galvanized to take swift and decisive retaliatory measures. This would spell doom for the pirates. To top all of this, modern submarines are designed to be incredibly quiet, making them difficult to detect, even with specialized equipment, and Somali pirates lack the sophisticated sonar capabilities required to track submerged submarines. Unless a submarine chose to surface, which is highly unlikely near pirate-infested waters, the pilots would simply have no way of knowing it was there in the first place. However, the equation slightly changes if we consider the possibility of a narco-sub being involved. Narco-submarines are crude semi-submersibles used by drug cartels to transport narcotics. These vessels are less sophisticated than naval submarines, but still often attempt to evade detection by traveling underwater. Can you imagine pirates attacking a submarine? Would they be that bold or perhaps that reckless? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below the video. Okay, what happens when Somali pirates attack a submarine? The waters of the Indian Ocean have long been a battleground for maritime crime. Somali pirates, driven by poverty and the opportunity for substantial ransoms, have terrorized commercial shipping lanes for years. Yet a new and more insidious threat has emerged, the narco-sub. These semi-submersible vessels designed for stealthy transport of illicit narcotics pose a unique challenge to both anti-piracy forces and the pirates themselves. A central question arises, 
what might happen should a group of Somali pirates encounter a narco sub in their traditional hunting grounds? The answer requires an analysis of the motivations, capabilities, and desperate nature of both groups. Somali pirates operate with a distinct set of tactics. They favor speed and surprise, utilizing small, agile skiffs equipped with light weaponry like AK-47s and occasionally even rocket-propelled grenades. Their typical objective is to board and capture a commercial vessel, holding it hostage while negotiating a ransom. While they have shown a capacity for violence, ultimately the goal is financial gain, not inflicting casualties. Narco subs, on the other hand, are beasts of an entirely different nature. Built by drug cartels, they embody extreme measures to avoid detection. Their weaponry is minimal, consisting of small arms, primarily for deterrence against under-equipped coast guards. These vessels prioritize concealment, not combat. Their crews, a mix of cartel enforcers and locals seeking a desperate payday, are highly motivated to protect their precious cargo worth millions in street value. An encounter between the two presents a volatile mismatch. The pirates, attracted by the unusual profile of a narco sub, might initially see an opportunity for a lucrative prize. However, upon realizing the nature of their target, a complex risk assessment comes into play. Narco subs lack the valuable hostages of a commercial ship and are crewed by men who have everything to lose. A conflict could result in the destruction of the cargo, sinking millions worth of illegal substances to the ocean floor. This translates to a disastrous outcome for both the pirates and the cartel behind the operation. The pirates possess superior firepower, yet lack the underwater capabilities to force a narco sub to the surface. While warning shots and harassing tactics are a possibility, escalating to a full-on attack carries a high probability of failure and potential retaliation by the cartel forces that the pirates likely want to avoid. The history of Somali pirates offers a sobering reminder. Attacks on military ships, such as the 2006 incident with the USS Cape St. George and the USS Gonzales, were decisively repelled, underscoring the consequences of misjudging a target. Yet the desperate nature of these criminal groups cannot be underestimated. It's feasible that less experienced pirates might miscalculate the risk, leading to a limited skirmish, potentially even drawing in other pirate groups alerted to a potential prize. The outcome of such a clash is unpredictable. A cautious pirate group might ultimately disengage, choosing the potential of tracking the narco sub in hopes of exploiting a mechanical failure or a change of plans on the part of the smugglers. However, should hostilities erupt, the confined nature of a narco sub and the vastness of the ocean provide a distinct advantage to those on the defensive. But before we get back to submarines and talk about whether it's possible for them to somehow crash into ships, this is what happened on a fateful day in 2006. What happens when Somali pirates attack a U.S. Navy warship? The real-life story. It was March 18, 2006, and approximately 25 nautical miles off the coast of Somalia, two U.S. Navy warships patrolled the waters as part of Combined Task Force 150, a multinational mission to combat piracy and terrorism. On the horizon, a blip. Nothing unusual at first. Fishing vessels were a common sight in these waters. Yet something seemed off about this particular vessel. This was no ordinary fishing boat. It was a large diesel-powered skiff, the type favored by Somali pirates, and in tow were two smaller attack skiffs. The profile was a classic pirate. Small, fast, and likely armed. The USS Cape St. George, a Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser, and the USS Gonzales, an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, both based out of Norfolk, Virginia, moved to intercept. Suspicions deepened as naval personnel observed what appeared to be rocket-propelled grenade launchers in the hands of individuals on the larger skiff. Piracy was rampant in these waters, a result of Somalia's lawlessness and desperate poverty. Merchant vessels were the usual prey, their cargoes fetching massive ransoms. Attacking U.S. warships was an unprecedented escalation. And the chase is on. The Navy ships closed in but maintained a prudent distance, 
Boarding teams were assembled on rigid-hulled inflatable boats, or RHIBs. Their mission? Investigate, verify, and if necessary, apprehend the suspected pirates. The situation took a dramatic turn as the RHIBs approached the diesel skiff. The individuals on board were not fishermen. They were indeed pirates, and they weren't surrendering. The pirates made a dash for the coast, the RHIBs hot on their heels. The chase itself was evidence of the asymmetry of this encounter. A lumbering diesel skiff versus sleek U.S. Navy boats. This wasn't a race the pirates could win. The Attack Just before dawn, the pirates made their fatal move. They opened fire on the RHIBs. Rocket-propelled grenades streaked through the air, followed by the staccato bursts of automatic weapons. It was a desperate act born either out of the recklessness of cornered men or a complete miscalculation of their odds of survival. The rules of engagement were clear. The U.S. Navy ships were authorized to defend themselves. The response was swift and overwhelming. The machine guns of the Cape St. George and the Gonzales roared back, joined by other smaller caliber weapons. The sea around the pirate skiff churned under the torrent of fire. The pirate's fate. The larger diesel skiff, loaded with fuel drums, was the first to pay the price. Tracer rounds ignited a drum and the skiff erupted in a fireball, burning down to the waterline. Chaos reigned among the pirates. Seeing their main vessel ablaze, those on the smaller attack skiffs finally ceased their futile resistance. One pirate lost his life, five others were wounded. Those were the fortunate ones. The rest were taken into custody while U.S. Navy teams scrambled to recover potential survivors from the burning wreckage. Dutch medical personnel, part of the combined task force, were rushed in to assist the injured. Evidence was collected, RPG launchers, automatic weapons, and the charred remains of the vessels themselves. The Aftermath The shockwaves of the incident rippled through the anti-piracy operations. The International Maritime Organization had repeatedly warned ships about the dangers of the Somali coast, but attacks had surged despite increased naval presence. The 2006 incident highlighted a troubling fact. Driven to extremes, these pirates were willing to risk their lives against vastly superior forces. The incident sent a clear message across the pirate networks. Even the mightiest of naval ships are not off-limits. The consequences of engaging them are beyond grim. So what do they do to evade piracy threats? How do submarines evade piracy threats? Submarines evade piracy threats primarily through their inherent design advantages and the strong deterrent effect of their presence. They're built to operate underwater, remaining practically invisible to surface threats like pirate vessels. Modern submarines can stay submerged for extended durations and prioritize minimizing their acoustic signature through advanced propulsion, sound dampening materials, and careful operation. This makes detection exceptionally difficult for pirates, who typically lack sophisticated sonar systems. Conversely, submarines possess superior sonar, allowing them to detect potential threats like pirate vessels long before becoming targets themselves. Should a submarine be detected, it retains significant tactical advantages. They can leverage their underwater maneuverability to change depth, speed, and direction more effectively than surface vessels, making pursuit difficult. Submarines also operate at depths that render the light weapons carried by pirates ineffective. Furthermore, pirates understand the overwhelming force that modern naval vessels possess and are deterred by the mere possibility that an unidentified sub could be a military asset. Historical incidents such as the decisive defeat of pirates attempting to engage the USS Cape St. George and the USS Gonzales only reinforce this deterrence. Pirates seek vulnerable commercial ships for ransom and profit, and a submarine offers none of these, while also carrying a high risk of swift and devastating retaliation. This makes it a strategically unwise target. While contingencies like narco-subs or surfacing due to technical failures must be considered, the combination of stealth, tactical advantages, and the inherent deterrent factor make submarines exceptionally well-equipped to evade the threat of piracy. Do you see the pirates as brave or crazy enough to attack a submarine? Let us know in the comments. As we come to the end of this video, we now know it's unlikely pirates would knowingly attack a submarine. 
But by analyzing this scenario, we've uncovered a lot. The submarine's stealth advantage, the pirate's reliance on surprise, and the power of deterrence. So if you found this video helpful and entertaining, make sure to leave us a thumbs up and a comment sharing your thoughts. And if you want to find out more about life in the vast ocean, subscribe to our channel and you won't be disappointed. We'll see you in the next video.